I am Sabrina Cape with Capable Financial, and I'm going to lead our session today. And our session today is set up and navigation. Um, I do want to mention that we are not representing QuickBooks in these tutorial sessions. All rights related to QuickBooks remain within to it, and you'll see notations at the bottom of the screen. The very first of our objectives today is to actually set up a um, new company inside QuickBooks um, Pro. The QuickBooks calls an, it a new company, but for us, it's actually a fund. A fund is a separate set of books, and we maintain several funds in our cities. For example, in Georgia, you may have a general fund, a splossed fund, a water and sewer fund, although there, there can be several other funds, these are the main ones that we tend to see. But I do want to caution you, ju though, just because you think there is a separate checkbook means that it's a separate fund is not necessarily the case. For example, if you had a city beautification checkbook, that might be part of the general fund. So the general fund might have its main operating checkbook and the city beautification checkbook, but they might both be within the general fund. The main reason for keeping a separate checkbook might be for some type of special project, but I just don't want anyone to get confused thinking just because I've got a separate checkbook, I've got a separate company. Therefore, the very first step in the setup process is determine how your fund structure currently is, how you've had your account structure and your fund structure um, before, before you set it up inside QuickBooks. In our examples in the, section, the session we're doing today, we're going to be using the general fund um, as our company in QuickBooks because this is normally your largest um, fund and everybody has one. So let's get back to kind of how we create that. We would click on File, and then we would click on New Company. The Uniform Chart of Accounts is what guides us with respect to how we set up our funds. The Uniform Chart of Accounts was put in place back in the late 90s. The chart doesn't require necessarily that you use the numbering schemes, although it is highly recommended, but it's, um, the fund structure is recommended and required. The fund structure, you can get complete details inside the full Uniform Chart of Accounts um, document that can be found on DCA's website, but this is an excerpt that shows just what the fund number is and what the fund name is. So the general fund in our cities is normally fund 100. The general fund is used to account for most of your activities inside the city, um, and that is why we're going to concentrate on that one today. However, there are other funds that you may want to consider setting up inside of QuickBooks. The Special Purpose Local Option Sales Tax, or the SPLOS Fund, Fund 320, is a good one that you might want to consider setting up inside QuickBooks as well. And the Water and Sewer Fund is also common for our cities, and this would be Fund 505. Proprietary funds are those group of funds that are used in our cities to, count, to account for activities and act like a business. You can see all of the listing of all the different utilities, but Water and Sewer tends to be the most common. I'll caution you on Fund 540, Solid Waste Fund. Some cities in Georgia put their Solid Waste Fund inside their general fund. Some cities inside Georgia have a separate enterprise fund for solid waste and garbage. What determines whether you are putting it into a general fund or whether you are putting it into a proprietary fund determines on your population. If your population is less than 5,000 as a city and you're not really in the business of the garbage collection, then that's why some, oftentimes you will find it in Fund 100. That's why you should consult where you have been placing it before. Now we're going to get started kind of setting up the company inside of QuickBooks, or in our case, we're going to set up our fund, our general fund for our city. So after we clicked the new company box, it will bring up this dialog box.
and we'll be using the Express Start option because we are not going to be exporting files. We're going to be keying things one by one, although we'll be showing you how the export process actually works. The company name. The most important thing for cities to do in the company name is to make sure that you put what fund it is. If you just put Exampleville and you set that up in all of your QuickBooks companies, then you'll not be able to tell the general fund from the splost fund from the water and sewer fund. So it's important for you to make sure in the company name that you put city of Exampleville general fund or whatever can actually fit. You may have to put just the city name and general fund. The um, industry here, we will put other or none because we are um, not a nonprofit, but it's basically just the most appropriate choice right here. Under the company type, we'll go ahead and we'll put other and none, and we'll input your federal ID number. And the question at the bottom, do you have employees, QuickBooks is asking you this so that you basically know um, whether you are going to be setting up your payroll inside of QuickBooks. If you are going to be setting up your payroll inside QuickBooks, you would click yes. If not, you would click no in that particular part. This email address when prompted is very important. This is what QuickBooks uses to validate your license and your ownership. So you should go back to your order that was actually placed because this is what you'll be asked for to validate your license and you'll be prompted for your QuickBooks password that was supplied when you actually ordered um, your QuickBooks product. After the validation of your license is when more information comes up and you're able to enter the address, phone numbers, email, and all of the uh, contact information really related to the city and related to this fund. Once everything is entered, you'll click on the Create Company File button in the lower right-hand corner to create the file. Right now it's grayed out because we haven't keyed in all of the information. The good news about this setup process is after you do the Express Startup, if you figure out that you've input something incorrectly, you can always go back to the top of the toolbar, Company, and click on Company Information, and then you'll be able to access the information and you're able to change anything within that information that you would like to. In this particular example that we are doing today, we are going to click on the Start Working. QuickBooks gives you a couple of different options that you can actually do your setup. You can actually do your setup by doing each one of these steps above. But we are going to do the Start Working um, because we're going to move into the chart, which in my opinion, the chart is the hardest thing to do because it requires the, as a lot of thought into how you want your financial reports to look. There is no one way to do the setup. There's lots of different ways to do the chart setup, but we have um, done the setup in the way that we've chosen. We've chosen not to use classes in our setup. Classes are another way that you can do the setup. I just want to make sure that everybody understands there are multiple ways to set this up and this is just one recommended way.